Sooth 2 is normally used to tame harsh resonances in a sound, but today we're going to go over six ways to absolutely abuse this plugin and use it for otherworldly sound design, just like this. If you do want some cool sounds that have been processed with Sooth 2, grab my free sample pack down below. So tip number one is to use hard mode to make something noisier. I've got a vocal in this track example. I want you to listen to what the track sounds like now and how we can use Sooth 2 to degrade the vocal and make it sound more lo-fi. <laughs> Sounds nice uh, already, but I think there's a few more cool things we can do to it with Sooth 2 to make it more lo-fi and degraded sounding. So let's load it up here. Now I've just got it on a default kind of setting with this flat start preset. So there's no real processing being applied to it. Now by default, it's on soft mode. Soft is kind of designed more for mixing and to do subtle resonance control. <laughs> So to me, that makes it sound a bit cleaner, but I'm not trying to do a better mix down here. What I'm trying to do is change the sound in a more drastic way. So we're gonna enable hard mode. Hard mode can be pushed a lot harder as the description of Sooth 2 says, and it's, in my opinion, way better for sound design. Notice that when I push the depth now, what happens to the sound? <laughs> I had to boost up the trim there so you could hear the effect, but it sounds way more distorted and crazy, right? That's what hard mode is good for, really just taking out so many resonances that it starts to make the signal feel noisy. Now we can go even wilder with this by increasing the sharpness and also playing around with the selectivity. Making the sharpness higher makes it more granular and noisy into my ears and selectivity kind of just adjusts the tone a bit. What I've also done here as well is I've disabled the band, but I've boosted up the 4K range where we really hear the main frequencies of the sound just because I want this effect to be exaggerated around this area, right? So the higher the boost, the more suppression we'll get. I'm going to ease the depth back on the rest of it now just because we've got more in this particular frequency range. Play around with the selectivity a bit more. And let's just A, B it by bypassing. It also has this nice compression effect, which is going to happen when you suppress the resonances like this so much. So it's kind of distorted sounding, but it's not something you'd be able to get with normal distortion. The other main factor here is that the attack and release are both at the fastest possible. Obviously with slower attacks and slower releases, we can soften the effect of the noise, uh, making it react a little bit slower. Obviously if we have it too fast uh, on both ends, it'll start to not really get the effect we're after. Still cool though, but just different. So number two is to modulate the band's sharpness and selectivity to add movement to a sound. I've got a drum break layer in my drums here, which is just kind of chilling in the background of my drum arrangement. And with all of the drums, you can't really hear it, but it just kind of adds a bit of organic vibe to it. If I exaggerate it, Right, but what we can do to make it contribute a little bit more is use Sooth 2 sound design functionalities to just add some movement. So let's bring up Sooth 2 here. I'm gonna solo the break again. And again, we've got a flat start here. So first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna, again, switch it to hard mode. We're gonna increase the depth. Notice a lot of the high frequencies are being controlled there. And because we've got high sharpness, it's quite specific. And we can play around with these controls now. I might need to bring up the trim a bit. Also add some boosts and cuts. I'm adding some boosts in the low end, so more of that comes through. As in more of it gets removed, should I say. 
right? So it's just now if we bypass it, it's got a very interesting kind of half organic, half digital kind of texture to it, which I absolutely love. So now let's play around with these bands and these sharpness and selectivity controls. I'm actually just going to uh, record the automation with my hand. So let's keep, kind of see what we get. All right, let's do it again with the selectivity. And lastly, with these EQ bands. Right, and now we can see if we right click here and uh, add all the lane for the automated envelopes, the automation we've added, which is pretty cool. And now if we layer this in with our other drums slowly, you'll see the effect the movement has, right? Bring it up. It's a really subtle effect, but I absolutely love that real fine-tuned uh, modulation it's adding. It makes the whole drum uh, group feel like it's uh, organic and moving and just got this life to it that it didn't have before. So number three is to solo the Delta. Now the Delta, we go into this chime sample I got down here and load up Sooth 2, is this button in the kind of bottom left of the GUI here. And if we click it, what's gonna happen is it's going to pass through only the part of Sooth 2 that's actually being suppressed. So we're hearing the effect of what Sooth 2 is doing in isolation. Now this is normally used for mixing purposes so you can hear what Sooth 2 is actually doing. So you can hear, is it affecting the frequencies that you want it to? But if we misuse it again, we can get some amazing sound design results. So let's click this and hear it. And now you may need to bring up the trim to hear the effect at the same time. So I'm gonna gain it up quite heavily here. So those chime frequencies, you may have briefly heard there. I'm gonna add some more volume on the, the fader as well. Are the frequencies that are, are being removed from Sooth 2, but we're gonna use them as a cool sound design thing. Now what I like to do beyond what the settings are already here, I'm actually gonna move it to hard mode. I had it in soft mode before, which is sometimes nice, but I'm going to put it on hard mode and then kind of resonantly target certain frequencies and sweep it down like this. Now you may need to play around with the depth here a bit. Uh, sometimes you want to go more though. Play around with the sharpness and selectivity. And if you can, it might not sound too different, but if you compare it to the original, now we're just getting the cool resonances from the sound. And we can even go lower on the depth to get that more uh, prominent. Again, the lower the depth, the more you'll have to compensate with gain when using this effect. But hey, that's sound design, right? Now a bonus tip is I like to use this effect with just getting those targeted resonances with some sort of granular synthesis engine or perhaps even something like the crystallizer uh, included in sound toys. This is a great kind of tool to just get some really grainy crystally sounds. So I'm gonna apply this after Sooth 2. Really dope effect when you listen to it in context. So number four is creative sidechain sources. Now the main thing you would have heard at the start of the video is this synth pad I've got. Now I've already got Sooth to apply it on hard mode with a few boosts and this low pass filter sweeping through the resonances. Again, I've got it on Delta mode with a bit of gain here, just so we're getting the sweep of resonances that we want. It's a really cool kind of uh, very smooth sounding effect. However, I have the sidechain turned on 
And the side chain is actually coming from, as you can see in Ableton here, this pad side chain channel that I have turned off. Uh, but if we listen to it in solo, you can hear what is going on. So there's some OTT, which I might bring back a little bit, uh, and some chorus ensemble on the vibrato mode here. And it's also offset by five semitones at negative 12 semitones here, as opposed to the negative seven that we've got on our main synth pad for most of the time. So it's an octave lower and creating this really interesting sidechain material that triggers the synth pad in really interesting ways. What this is gonna do is it's going to use the uh, sidechain inputs frequencies to tell this synth pad's frequencies, uh, which ones to boost and which ones to cut, right? So when we're filtering out the frequencies, we're actually being told by the sidechain input which ones to come through, right? And because it's a different sound it's being applied to, we get this really unpredictable result, which is absolutely incredible for sound design. Notice when I solo this and I turn off the sidechain, the difference in the sound, right? But with it on. This is particularly prominent as I increase the vibrato on the sidechain. Notice what happens when I increase the amount. See the little frequencies moving around? And as I increase the rate too. That's even a really dope effect there, right? It's not adding vibrato to the original sound, but it's using that frequency, a map of frequencies, I guess you could call it, to make the movement what it is on the synth pad here. And obviously any changes I make on the side chain pad will be uh, affected on the other one. So for example, I could go here and add uh, some sort of phaser effect and that could add some really cool results, right? I could go and add some like intense distortion. And I could even go around and play with the pitch of the sound and see how that is affecting things. Notice how the higher ones kind of sound a bit more subdued. It's because there's less frequencies in that range to apply to it. Pretty cool. And obviously I can take completely other sources for the sidechain. For example, I could use something like drums, even our break we used earlier, and use a more gated rhythmic sidechain effect. Sounds different to a normal gate, right? Because we're using it to control resonances, not just the overall volume. But I'm gonna leave it with my pad side chain. An even cooler way to take this further for number five is to use left, right differences, unlink them and do some stereo side chaining stuff. So if we head back into Sooth 2, I can actually unlink the left and right channels down the bottom here into 0%, meaning it's gonna tame the resonances or in this case, bring them out in the Delta mode, uh, different for the left and right channel, increasing the stereo effect we're getting, adding some really cool stuff, right? This also means any stereo effects we add to the pad side chain here will affect, because we're using a side chain input, will affect the synth pad in really cool ways. So if I listen to this now with the stereo unlinked, There's already a few extra little artifacts that I can hear that are a stereo, but we can go to the pad side chain, enable this auto pan device, and now listen to what happens to the synth pad. Notice the panning of the side chain is kind of resonating on each side in really cool ways. And we can obviously increase the amount and rate. It's not just the same as a tremolo or auto pan effect on this channel, it's affecting it in a different way, which is really cool. This goes for other stereo imaging effects too. For example, I could bring some really intense chorus onto this uh, channel. I'm actually gonna turn off the phaser and the uh, distortion I added before and we're gonna just add some chorus. Maybe add a second auto pan with a different uh, rhythm, different shape. Go random.
I'm going to try adding the shift device with this octave effect in Ableton, which is cool just to get these cool extra little artifacts. That's starting to add some really interesting movement to the synth pad now. So it's really fun just to experiment with the stereo effects you can add in the sidechain channel and see how that impacts things. Number six, the last one is to use Sooth 2 in solo mode uh, with particular bands in order to create these really interesting uh, ambiences. Again, this is a great technique if you're trying to get something that's halfway between an organic and a digital sound. I love applying this particular technique on forest ambiences, field recordings. I've got obviously a forest ambience here. And let's listen to it without Sooth 2 first. It's just providing a bit of background texture for my lo-fi house track here. By the way, if you want this sample, it's included in our EDM starter kit, which you can grab for free down below. But let's enable Sooth 2 for now. And what I'm gonna do here is you will notice I've got hard mode with a fair amount of depth selected, but I've got this band here, right? And it's in the band reject mode, which means it's cutting completely everything out of this middle range. I've got the Q set fairly wide um, and we can just see what's going to happen here, right? We can increase the sensitivity, but it's pretty much going to remain the same no matter what the sensitivity is because of the nature of a band reject. But I'm going to move around the frequency and let's hear what we get. Right, so this is great to automate. Now, bear in mind the listen is enabled. If we didn't have listen enabled, it would just be removing those frequencies from the resonance suppression, right? So it's a different kind of effect without listen on. Not really what we want. It's not doing a lot. So having listening enabled is key for this sound design effect. And I'm gonna go ahead and just again, record a little tweak of the frequency there and add some movement to this forest ambience. Right, there we go. We've got a really, really cool background ambience. We can now see if we can hear that in the mix. In some ways, it kind of sounds like it's adding a bit of a shakery rhythm to the drums, which is cool because of the certain resonances that are just poking through. The dynamic part of Sooth 2 can be really unpredictable and fun like that. And guys, that is six abuses of Sooth 2 that I have discovered for sound design. I hope you got something out of this uh, today and you can use Sooth 2 in your own tracks in these creative ways. Again, if you want some cool sounds that have been processed with Sooth 2, there's a little sample pack you can grab down below in the description. As always, like, sub and all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, Happy producing.